This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 7, The Passive Nature of the Correction. David There are a couple of passages we can use as a springboard for coming to see the passive nature of correction. These passages are about stillness, about going beyond the words. Many have heard the quote before, Love does not oppose. In the Song of Prayer, Jesus talks about humility in the same way. He says that the truly humble can allow their holy mind to rest without concern for the world, without thought of enemies and without need to judge or defend because humility does not oppose. What also comes to mind are the first few pages of part two of the workbook. This is where the workbook seems to move into its final phase. After 220 lessons have been completed, the emphasis of the lessons shifts towards silence. There are probably two forms of practice that commonly come out of working through the latter part of the workbook. One of them is to attempt to use a central thought to guide the mind into the meditative state. Another is more free form, not trying to think of anything, not trying to even hold on to a central thought. That is the one that leads into the revelatory state the one that becomes your common means of practice. The other forms were all preliminary to this, whether they were visualizations or moving your eyes around the room or even holding on to the central idea. This is probably the form of meditation the advanced teacher of God should embrace and try to practice. I thought we might read through the introduction to the second part of the workbook together, but first I will read from the I Need Do Nothing section in Chapter 18. Save time for me by only this one preparation and practice doing nothing else. I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Believe it for just one instant and you will accomplish more than is given to a century of contemplation or of struggle against temptation. To do anything involves the body. And if you recognize you need do nothing, you have withdrawn the body's value from your mind. Here is the quick and open door through which you slip past centuries of effort and escape from time. This is the way in which sin loses all attraction right now. For here is time denied and past and future gone. Who needs do nothing has no need for time. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. Text chapter 18, section 7, 
Paras 6 and 7. And now, from the What is Forgiveness section that follows the introduction to part 2 of the workbook. Forgiveness is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. Do nothing, then, and let forgiveness show you what to do through Him who is your guide, your Saviour and Protector, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success. Workbook Part 2 Section 1 Paras 4 and 5 All these passages point to a sense of correction being passive, not active in any sense. Truth is not about battling against illusions. It is about being able to see that only illusions can battle. In that awareness and in that recognition, you do not attempt to take a side. You do not even attempt to perceive that injustice or unfairness is taking place because you realize that if you perceive injustice or if you perceive someone being unfairly treated, that is just another way of saying that you are denying your father. There could be no injustices and God being who he is. It has to mean that injustices and conflicts are all misperceptions. Now we will read from the introduction to part 2 of the workbook. Words will mean little now. We use them but as guides on which we do not depend. For now we seek direct experience of truth alone. The lessons that remain are merely introductions to the times in which we leave the world of pain and go to enter peace. Now we begin to reach the goal this course has set and find the end toward which our practicing was always geared. Now we attempt to let the exercise be merely a beginning, for we wait in quiet expectation for our God and Father. He has promised he will take the final step himself, and we are sure his promises are kept. We have come far along the road, and now we wait for him. We will continue spending time with him each morning and at night, as long as makes us happy. We will not consider time a matter of duration now. We will use as much as we will need for the result that we desire. Nor will we forget our hourly remembrance in between, calling to God when we have need of Him as we are tempted to forget our goal. Workbook Part 2 Introduction Paras 1 and 2 A beautiful sentence. We will not consider time a matter of duration now. And the bottom of the fourth paragraph continues. We say the words of invitation 
that his voice suggests and then we wait for him to come to us. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. Now are all ancient promises upheld and fully kept. No step remains for time to separate from its accomplishment. For now we cannot fail. Sit silently and wait upon your father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will he do so. And you could have never come this far unless you saw, however dimly, that it is your will. I am so close to you we cannot fail. Father, we give these holy times to you in gratitude to him. Him who taught us how to leave the world of sorrow in exchange for its replacement given us by you. We look not backward now. We look ahead and fix our eyes upon the journey's end. Accept these little gifts of thanks from us as through Christ's vision we behold a world beyond the one we made and take that world to be the full replacement of our own. And now we wait in silence, unafraid and certain of your coming. We have sought to find our way by following the guide you sent to us. We did not know the way, but you did not forget us. And we know that you will not forget us now. We ask but that your ancient promises be kept, which are your will to keep. We will with you in asking this. The Father and the Son whose holy will created all that is, can fail in nothing. In this certainty, we undertake these last few steps to you and rest in confidence upon your love, which will not fail the Son who calls to you. And so we start upon the final part of this one holy year, which we have spent together in the search for truth and God, who is its one creator. We have found the way he chose for us and made the choice to follow it as he would have us go. His hand has held us up. His thoughts have lit the darkness of our minds. His love has called to us unceasingly since time began. Workbook Part 2 Introduction Paragraphs 4 through 8 and one paragraph down. Now is the need for practice almost done. For in this final section, we will come to understand that we need only call to God and all temptations disappear. Instead of words, we need but feel His love. Instead of prayers, we need but call his name. 
Instead of judging, we need but be still and let all things be healed. We will accept the way God's plan will end as we received the way it started. Now it is complete. This year has brought us to eternity. One further use for words we still retain. From time to time, instructions on a theme of special relevance will intersperse our daily lessons and the periods of wordless deep experience which should come afterwards. These special thoughts should be reviewed each day, each one of them to be continued till the next is given you. They should be slowly read and thought about a little while, preceding one of the holy and blessed instants in the day. Workbook Part 2 Introduction Para 10 and 11